I just got done basically restoring this uh, Cobra 138 XLR. It's a 40 channel AM and sideband mobile radio. Um, it was in pretty much unmodified condition, really good. Uh, really weren't any repairs to do because it worked worked when I got it. You know, other than you to be expected for a radio that's vintage, it def was definite need of an alignment. But uh, so you know, change the electrolytic capacitors. But one thing I did find that was wrong was a ceramic capacitor. Now, pretty much all radios you're going to find, the unless it's tube type, those, the, the actual chassis will be at DC ground potential. But pretty much all your solid state stuff, you're going to have DC board ground or circuit ground, and then you're going to have chassis ground. The chassis ground is the radio, the, cab, the cabinet, the metal bracket that goes around the outside. And then your DC ground is going to be just that. It's going to be the... the Usually what you'll see is the largest traces on the you know, bottom side of your circuit board. That's going to be the DC ground. But they're not connected to the actual chassis ground. The only, word, the only place they're coupled are through little ceramic capacitors. They're bypass caps. So you'll see a couple of these usually you know, tacked between the chassis. That, like on this radio, they have little metal tabs, little solder tabs that stick off of the actual aluminum horseshoe bracket there. And it just solders between that and then the DC chass or board ground. But one thing I happened to notice, because I actually had to fold this one up to uh, get to a component that was on the underside of it. And when I did, yeah, it's seen better days. <laughs> it looks like it exploded. But the interesting thing is, it still tests fine, at least for you know capacitance-wise. You know, as far as the value goes, it still tests okay. So... We'll take a capacitor tester here. Uh, I've had this little meter for years. I love this thing. Works great. It's very accurate. It's uh, almost all digital electronics. I think he still makes this. Probably might have a newer version. Um, don't pay any attention to this board that's on here. This is a, I just leave this on here full time. I use this for testing Veractor diode. So I hook, you know, hook up my power supply. And I have a little socket here that I can just plug a Veractor diode in. But that way I can test the capacitance. I can, with an external power supply attached to these terminals, I can measure the capacitance of those Veractor diodes. But so like I say, it's not actually attached right now to anything. I mean, it's attached across here, but there's no actual connections to anything until you actually put a diode in there. So in any case, we'll hit the capacitance here and get a get a good one because I changed the other one it still looks fine and these are 104s so that's a 0.1 microfarad and if we install this one we can see it reads 0.102 you know I, I, the little bit of variation you're going to get from you know, the wire leads here but you know somewhere around there so it's 0.1 it's measuring fine and then we'll take this one that has a hole blown in the side of it <laughs> It actually, if you look really close, it actually looks like it blew a hole through the disc, the actual disc material itself. Just didn't ha didn't come out the other side. And, hmm, look at that, 0 0.09. That's pretty damn close to, to uh, 0 0.1 microfarad. So, you know, as far as capacitance goes, it's actually still fine. So, I'm not sure what happened inside the radio to cause that. Uh, could have just been a bad capacitor, anything's possible. But, uh... What I, another thing I want to do was, I just want to hook this up to a power supply. Now, I can't find a rating, because schematics usually never listed, but even the parts diagram doesn't tell you a voltage rating. But I'm assuming these are probably 50 volt. Um, that's a pretty standard rating they'll use for these things. So just out of curiosity, I want to hook this up to a power supply and pump 50 volts into it and see if I can get any... Uh, any reaction out of it, like maybe sparks or an explosion. I want to do the same thing to the other one. Actually, I'll probably start with the good one. But uh, so what I'm going to be attaching here, that's what these wires here are. We're going to be attached to this power supply right here. Oh, yeah, I'll turn the current so it's not up the whole way. It's currently at 24 volts, which we definitely don't need that much. <laughs> I got it turned and cranked the fine down the whole way. And we'll just see if we can get anything out of one of these things. I'll lay that down there. Try and get it all on the camera. I doubt anything's going to happen, but you never know.
Like I say, I'm going to assume that's a 50 volt cap. That one seems to be doing fine. It's blocking. Not getting warm. So that one appears to be just fine doing what a, you'd expect a ceramic cap to be doing when you hook up DC to it. Absolutely nothing. We'll turn that back down. Now let's hook up this one that's got a hole blown in the side of it. <laughs> I actually want to see what happens when we apply some DC voltage to that. I don't see the current drain current shooting up. There's 51 volts. It's not getting warm. Take her even farther. We'll just go out to the max for this power supply. There's 62.9 volts. Yeah, not doing anything. Not getting warm. So apparently its failure happened and that was the end of it. <laughs> so I just thought I'd see if it actually would do anything, but. Yeah, so this is something to keep an eye out for. It's And this is really, really rare. I know, I actually know there are people that change these. Anytime they work on a radio, they always change the bypass caps. I really don't know why. Uh, lightning strikes, yeah, you'll occasionally see these go out, or you'll usually see these go out. If, you know, a radio's been taking a, a lightning hit or lightning strike through the, the antenna jack or something extreme happened. But honestly, that, that it doesn't happen that much. Um, yeah, something happened to this one, so, yeah, definitely changed it, and like I say, I changed changed its partner in crime, but other than that, the majority, most, most cases in radios, I'll never change these, because it's ceramic caps, they're, they're one of the most reliable, uh, components, um, and usually these actually lead a very easy life, like I say, they're just a bypass cap between DC board ground and chassis ground, so, uh, yeah, it's just kind of rare to actually see one with a hole blown in it, especially a mobile radio. I mean, there's no high voltage in this thing, so yeah, some it's it's hard to tell what could have happened to cause it, but apparently it didn't cause any other problems. So there you go. There's just a quickie on a self-destructing ceramic cap in a Cobra 138 XLR. Well, that was pretty <clears throat> pretty non -spectac spectacular, wasn't it? So, damn it, I want to see some sparks. <laughs> so what the hell? Like I say, it's probably a 50-volt cap. Let's try putting 500 volts into it, or see how how close it can get to 500 volts. So I have the one that exploded hooked up. Because I figure it's probably going to be the most susceptible to it. And what we're going to be powering that with is this old... Over here. Okay. And what that is is an HP 711A. It's a tube-type high-voltage power supply, and that one goes up to 500 volts. So, I have the leads running, you know, down from it. And then I have, because these are uh, stacking plugs, and then I have the outputs, or the, the back side of those, run into the test lead that goes to this meter right here. So this will be reading the DC voltage directly down here at that cap. Let's see if we can get anything. So we'll see how many volts it can get before, before or if anything even happens to it. Flip on the DC supply. Ah! I saw a spark. Yep, looks like it's a dead short now. Yep, because as soon as I start to turn up the voltage, my amp meter on that pegs. So. <laughs> I can turn that off. I don't know if that showed up in a camera, but I did actually see a spark down here. <laughs> so, it didn't make it too far, because I, I hadn't turned the knob very damn far before it, it popped. So, uh, I really wasn't paying attention to the meter that much yet, because I wasn't expecting it to arc over. But it, it, it looks, to me, it still looks the same. It has that black spot, which is where it arced this time. See right there at the top of that where it's blown out, there's the hole. <laughs> but that's where it was arcing at. So, yep, that's probably what it did in the radio. Bzzz. So, 
we finally had a spark. Like I said, so you'll have to... I, I don't know what voltage that was because I'm going to have to actually go back and look at the video to see what the meter up here <laughs> was displaying when it finally decided to arc. But I don't think it got much up to... It might have been, what, 100 volts, if that, so... But, uh, there you go. So, yeah, it definitely... And, oh, what the hell. Let's see how much it takes to destroy one that is still fine. I'll get that hooked up. Of course, I turned it off. I have to just give me a, about 30 seconds or so here, because it is a tube-type power supply. It's got a couple of big 6L6 tubes in it, so... I'll have to wait for them to warm up a little bit. And let's see, meter's still hooked up and turned on. So let's see if we can not only get one to spark, since this one doesn't have a hole in it. Uh, we'll see if we can actually get this one to explode. Try and get everything in camera again. Okay, so there we see the meter and the cap in the picture. Okay, power supply is turned on. Two hundred volts. Up oh, there it went. It was approaching three hundred volts before it finally went. Heard a little pop. Let's see what we got here. Huh, really didn't do anything. <laughs> At least not in spectacular fashion. It basically just blew out right there where the lead goes in. But I did get a pop right around. It was, like I said, I think I was getting up close to 300 volts when it finally, finally popped on me. But <laughs> so there you go. Here's what happens to a ceramic cap when you overvolt it. 